So uh, the objectives for today is to understand how to write effective research questions for our topic, to understand how to craft a thesis statement for our topic, and finally, to explore how effective questions can make your New York City History Day project more engaging. All right. Uh, so you're gonna be using the chat button. Uh, so just in the chat button, just tell me, how's everyone doing today? And uh, I'll be able to see some of your chats. Okay, but just write down like a little spots, you know, before we get started. Uh, how are we doing today? And I think I see a couple responses. Awesome. Okay, good exclamation mark and great. Okay, a couple of other responses. Wonderful. Well, I just asked you a question and you all responded. All right. And so I actually am going to ask you a question because not all questions are created equal. Uh, asking the right questions will make your project more engaging. So first of all, uh, why do we ask questions? And, you know, again, you can use the, you know, chat button, but, you know, this is something that we do every single day. But what is the purpose of asking questions. And I see a couple people when using the chat button, which I always love. Okay. So what's the purpose? It's something that we do every day, you know, in our classrooms and our jobs, we're constantly asking questions. So why do we ask questions? And I'm seeing a couple responses and I will share these to get information, to get more information. Uh, because questions will tell us what we need to know. So when we think about questions, we're going to uh, actually do some uh, questions right now. So I just want you to try this. And again, you're using the uh, chat button. Uh, <clears throat> and you don't have to do all of these at the same time. You know, you can pick and choose, but it'd be great to see a, you know, a couple of these. Uh, what month is your birthday? And, you know, again, you're using the chat button. Who is your favorite athlete? Where is the Statue of Liberty located? Can you play an instrument? Have you ever gone fishing? And I'm seeing things coming up on the chat box. What wonderful, you know, your month, birthday month. Who is your favorite athlete? Where is the Statue of Liberty located? Can you play a instrument? Have you ever gone fishing? And I'm just going to, you know, go over some of these responses. Oh, I see a couple of January birthdays. Uh, Okay, I see New York City fishing. Not, okay, I have gone fishing, but not deep uh, sea uh, fishing. I have, oh, there's two October birthdays. All right, excellent. So now we're going to segue into something different now because, just make this a little bit, okay, I'm just moving this over, okay. Now we're gonna do a different set of questions. And this set, okay, a little bit more complex. So now I'm going to ask you, if you were a animal, would you rather have fur or feathers? Explain why. Would you rather have six months of summer or winter? Explain why. So this one's a little bit more complex. If you are an animal, and again, you know, use those uh, that that chat button because the first one uh, when we did this before, it was you know, I had some interesting responses. If you were an animal, would you rather have fur or feathers? Explain why. 
Would you rather have six months of summer or winter? Explain why. And I'll give you, uh, let me see, about one more minute for that. I would love to see some of your responses. If you were an animal, would you rather have fur or feathers? Explain why. Would you rather have six months of summer or winter? Explain why. And I just wanna see what some of the responses are in the chat button. Oh, I love it, fur, because fur will keep me warm. I'd rather have six months of winter. I think most of my ancestors came from a cold place. I'd rather have feathers. Uh, when I did this workshop uh, at an, uh, another place, uh, I was with a student and the student said, I actually would rather have fur and feathers. And so the question now becomes, which types of questions generated more details? The first set of questions or the second set of questions. Now, if you notice in the first set of questions, uh, we call those closed-ended questions. Uh, very simple, they, you, they elicit only one type of response. Uh, where's the Statue of Liberty? New York. Uh, would, uh, when is your birthday? April, October. Uh, very simple, not a lot of engagement, and simply stated the facts. The second type of questions, notice I followed that question with why, because the art of asking why, it means that your questions are now more complex. Uh, your responses will give us deeper insights. And if you notice, I have to give you just a little bit more time uh, because the, uh, these open-ended questions were just a little bit more complex. So when you think of, what do you think of when you see the word research? research? And I, this is when I really would like for you to use that chat uh, box again because uh, I have my colleagues on the other end and they can uh, you know, share what some of the responses are. And this is what I came up with. When I think of the word research, uh, we think of examine, we think of study, explain, investigate, inspect, review, find evidence, analyze. And if you can think of others, again, you know, use that chat box. And why does this word, you know, for students, you know, why does it tend to, at times, you know, uh, cause such distress and it shouldn't, and, you know, the purpose of this workshop is for you to help your students, you know, uh, demystify the research process and to you know, think of you know, ways that we can uh, develop these effective questions you know, as we're doing our research. All right, so I think I have another response in the chat button. Yeah, find out more information about something. All right, so I'll go back one more time. Okay, I'm gonna close this out so I can see my screen. All right, excellent, okay. So writing effective open-ended questions uh, is going to be a big goal uh, for your students' New York City History Day project. You know, when they are doing this project, they actually will be doing, you know, different types of questions, those uh, very simplistic uh, closed-ended questions, the yes or no at the same time, uh, to really make their project more engaging uh, and to what I call to give it more meat. Uh, we want them to use more of those open-ended questions. So we're actually are going to be doing some interactive uh, work uh, for the next couple of slides and actually through the rest of this presentation. All right. 
So let me put this on my button over. Here we go. All right. Uh, so your students are doing research and you know, you're telling them and perhaps some of them came to you and said, I wanna do a research project. And the other workshops were talk about how to do a research plan, uh, pre-plan on doing research. But we know that successful research involves worrying and finding all the information out there about a topic. Uh, we know that you'll, you know, your students will never, or, None of us will be able to find or read all of this information. It's just so much information out there. So one of the goals is to, by developing effective research questions, uh, this will help give your students a clear focus on what they actually uh, want to answer, because they actually will be answering their own questions uh, about their topic in the course uh, of their research um, study uh, for National History Day. Uh, for right now, before I go on to the other slides, uh, does anyone have any questions? And again, uh, feel free to use the uh, chat button. So I'll just you know stop for just a couple of minutes before I go over uh, the rest of the presentation. Okay, if anyone has any questions right now. Okay, so we will continue. And at any point, uh, if you have a question, uh, you know, again, feel free to use the uh, chat button. All right. So, well. What is, exactly is a research question? We know it is open-ended, but what else is it? You know, we are calling uh, the research question the foundation of any project. Uh, these are the building blocks that will keep your students' project engaging, but what exactly is a research question? And feel free to use, and there's no right or wrong uh, responses, but feel free to use the chat button. But what exactly is a research question? They are open-ended. So the research questions, again, will be the foundation, okay? And these will be the questions that your students can only answer after they have done, you know, uh, research about their topic. So again, uh, the research is doing tremendous amount of reading, looking at those primary and secondary sources. And once they have all of this information, uh, the next couple of the rest of the presentation will talk about how do we develop these questions based on all of this information that they are now gathering. So some educators will call this uh, these guiding questions uh, closed-ended questions. So guiding questions are uh, closed-ended. Um, some can be open-ended, but just for the purpose of uh, this presentation, uh, we're just going to start with these very simplistic guiding questions. So I want you to take a look at this image. So I'll give you a couple seconds to visualize and take a look at this image. And your guiding questions usually start with who, why, when, and where. And this is when I really uh, would like to see uh, your responses in this chat button, this you know very striking image. And what questions do you have about this image? So start using the chat button and then we'll have a, a share out. So what questions do you have about this image? You know, the who, the why, the when, the where,
Oh, I'm seeing a lot of responses in the chat. Okay, who, why, when, and the where. All right, let's take a look at what we have so far. Uh, you can continue to look at this image. Uh, when was this image taken? Yes. Who is this woman? Who took the photo? Who is the person in this image and why? I love this question. And why is she significant? So we're generating a lot of questions about this image, these guiding questions, the who, why, where. All right, so let's continue. So we have talked about these guided questions and we're gonna uh, do this again as a group. Now, when we want to increase the complexity of these guiding questions to turn it into a research question, I want you to consider using these active words or these action words, cause, effect, compare, impact, change, influence. And we'll be coming back to these uh, impact words in a couple minutes, uh, but these guiding questions, you know, turning them into uh, complex, engaging questions, research questions, you know, do you have to use all of these uh, terms? Absolutely not. But by having your students uh, use even a few of these, uh, these are the building blocks that your students can use uh, to turn these simple questions into more complex research questions. Okay, so we will be, uh, again, doing a little bit more of interactive using the chat button again. All right, now we will know if the questions are engaging, if it has more than one answer. If we have to look at more than one source to find the answers, and if the answers can be debated, because these questions in research projects uh, are not always yes or no, uh, and there's always more than one response, and there's usually more than one way uh, to answer these, and it's, it's debatable. And it's not always the right answer, so to speak. Someone could be doing the same topic but come up with totally different uh, research questions based on that same topic. All right, so we're gonna try this, all right. And we're going to pretend that we are our students and you are in the classroom and perhaps your students have been doing, uh, you know, thinking about, you know, various topics. And so before they can actually do some research, um, they have to actually do some preliminary reading. They have to do some reading about their topic. And they have all of these questions, 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 questions. And then our job is to try to get them to narrow down two to three questions that we can use to guide their research. And so to think of that, question about that woman in the uh, image that I showed you. Maybe that is generating a lot of questions about who this person is and why she is significant and why I chose to uh, use her for this presentation. All right. So we know that the research topic uh, for this year's theme is Frontiers in History people, places, and ideas. And the beauty of doing History Day Project, uh, they purposely leave it so open-ended. So this lends itself to so many different possibilities. You know, thinking of frontiers, uh, what exactly 
is that, you know, people, places, and idea. Uh, and engaging research questions uh, will go beyond that yes and no, will be go beyond that uh, simple close-ended questions, but it will really talk about questions of time, place, cause and effect, change over time, impact, and significance. All right, so we will be using, we're coming back to this image of, so I have now identified this person. Her name is Elizabeth Jennings. And we're going to do a case study for developing research questions and writing a thesis statement. And we'll talk about thesis statements at the very end. Uh, and before we go on, again, I'd like to stop. And does anyone have any questions at this time? So I'll just give you like, you know, a couple seconds if you have any questions uh, at this time. Okay, so we will continue. Oh, there is a question, thank you, okay. Yes, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, we keep these up for literally uh, until the internet is no more. And so you can always come back to these webinars uh, to get information and to also share uh, with your students. So yes, all right. Okay, so I have now come up with a research question. Now I can only do this because I did a lot of research and research and research and research. And so my topic was, and I'm pretending I'm a student, and I said, Miss Mitchell, I know what I want to focus on. I want to focus on civil rights. Now, as a teacher, I'm going, whoa, wonderful. Okay, that's a pretty broad topic. So I think perhaps we need to narrow that down. What specifically about civil rights are you interested in? And now the students, and again, our guy is, our you know, job is to help guide and narrow down uh, the students focus because they'll come up with very broad topics uh, which are great but again you know through the course of doing a history day uh, project you know constantly trying to get them to narrow down their focus in which they can now uh, research specifically uh, on the question that they want to answer. And so my question, my research question, and I could only do this after I did a lot of research about civil rights in Brooklyn. So my focus went from civil rights and now it was narrowed down to a location, Brooklyn, okay? I have a time period, okay, pre-Civil War and shortly afterwards, the, eight, the late, uh, mid to late 1850s, and specifically, and I did a lot of research, and then it was something about this woman that piqued my interest, and as a student, I started to do even more research about her, and now I came up with a research question. How did Sarah Jennings inspire legal strategy and in the racial segregation on public transportation. So that became my research question based on doing preliminary researching. All right. So my general topic was civil rights. And then I came down with five guiding questions. And again, you are only doing this after your students have uh, develop their topic. They already know what their topic is. You're doing this after you have helped your students narrow down uh, their focus, their subtopics. And then after the students are doing all of that, now they're coming up with perhaps two or three uh, questions that they have about that subtopic within civil rights. And so 
I am going back to those five guiding questions. Who? Elizabeth Jennings. Well, why? Was determined to assert her rights despite Jim Crow laws segregating public transportation in New York City. When is this happening? 1850s and where? New York City. And then what happened? Elizabeth Jennings was forcibly removed from a streetcar because she was a black woman. So again, is are your students doing this on day one? Absolutely not. Uh, are they doing this on the second day of doing research? Absolutely not. Again, doing their preliminary research comes first. And after they're doing a tremendous amount of reading, and again, your teachers are helping them to narrow down their focus. And then after they have narrowed down their focus, then there is one or two questions that they still might have about that topic. And this is when you can start to do those five guiding questions. And so again, you might have five students in the same classroom doing civil rights in Brooklyn during the same time period, but coming up with five totally different guiding questions. Okay, does anyone have any questions before we go on? All right, I'll go to the next slide. So we're gonna work backwards to find out how I got to that research question. So remember in a couple slides earlier, we talked about how to turn guiding questions into more complex questions. So the cause and effect. What were the causes of the past events what were the effects? So now these are my research questions that I'm going to use to help engage my uh, project, to make my project definitely more engaging as opposed to giving simple yes or no uh, responses for a research question. Uh, did New York City have racial segregation uh, in the 1850s? Well, that's a yes or no answer, okay? Yes, very simple. But now by using, developing these more complex uh, questions, now your research project is definitely more engaging. So now I'm asking the word, why? Why did the city of New York have these policies? Why did Elizabeth Jennings decide to take a stand? What impact did her decision have on public transportation in New York? And so, yes, we know that when students are doing these research uh, questions, they you know, will be answering uh, their own questions in the course of uh, finalizing with that thesis statement, which we'll come to uh, shortly, but you can see that from those simple who, Elizabeth Jennings, where, New York City, what happened forcibly removed from uh, a streetcar, and when, 1850s. And now by adding these more complex questions, we're now getting more complex research questions. Uh, definitely helping your prod, your students' projects become more engaging. Let's look at another one, influence. How did people in the past view their world? So now again, what motivated Elizabeth Jennings to take a stand against segregation? What were the motivations of the streetcar conductor in removing her from her seat and what was the motivations for her arrest? Why was she arrested to begin with? So again, your students are not doing this on day one. They're not doing this on day two. Uh, they're doing this after you know weeks of doing research about their topic. 
And now they're thinking of all of these different questions. So they're using, starting with those simple guiding questions. And now from those guiding questions, they're using these anchor words, influence, compare, cause and effect. So they're using these anchor words to really start to develop a more engaging research questions. Change and continuity. What change? What has remained the same? Well, how did New York change their discriminatory policies during the course of widespread protests? And so we know, and I didn't give you all of the background information, uh, but Elizabeth Jennings, African-American woman uh, with her friend, she was, they were on their way to attend church services uh, on the Third Avenue streetcar and they were forcibly uh, removed uh, and thrown, literally bodily thrown into the street. And Elizabeth Jennings uh, successfully sued the city for restitution for her uh, soil clothing. And the lawsuit, uh, the result of that lawsuit uh, was that the Third Avenue uh, streetcar uh, abolished their discriminatory practices. All right, let's go to the next slide. And then finally, the impact. And this is the meat and potatoes. So we have moved from those very simple, uh, basic closed ended questions. You know, who? Well, Elizabeth Jennings. Now we're talking about her impact. How was the case of Elizabeth Jennings a turning point in the civil rights movement? How were things different in New York after this event? How was this event used to challenge other discriminatory practices in public transportation? And I know this sounds, you know, I'm making this very simplistic in terms of, uh, because, you know, this is only a, you know, hour, 45 minute workshop. But again, when you are in your classroom, you know, uh, prospective classrooms, you might just spend one day focusing on closed and open-ended questions. So this entire workshop that we are uh, reducing into this time frame actually can be used, you know, as a series of uh, lessons for your uh, particular class, you know, based on the makeup of your classroom. So you definitely uh, can extend uh, all of these skills and perhaps in your classroom, you know, just having for one day as a skill session, having students, you know, develop uh, the research questions using impact, having students develop questions using influence, having students, you know, uh, develop uh, research questions talking about, you know, change over time. So it doesn't have to be a one day and we expect students to get all of this information. Absolutely not. Uh, you know, it's a, a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, I'm going to stop for one uh, second before we move on. And this will be a great time for people to share uh, questions and perhaps uh, share uh, things that you are doing because I'm very curious at this point where some of you are uh, in this process, in the research pro uh, process. Have you started this project with your students? Uh, do your students have their topic at this point? Uh, have you started on uh, developing questions with your students? So this will be a great time for us to uh, pause for a couple minutes and just like share out some of the things that you are doing uh, in your uh, own particular classroom. So just kind of share out. If you haven't started it yet, you can simply say that also in the uh, chat box. So where are some of so where are some of you uh, in this process? Have some of you started uh, your projects? Um, and what are some of your concerns? You know, and you know, uh, questioning. You know, and developing questions, uh, research questions with your students. So this will be a good time. So, you know, 
Absolutely. Use that chat box. I love questions. I love questions because I like to give answers. And if I don't have all of the answers, I have my colleagues on the other end and they will definitely uh, throw you a lifeline. Okay, so is, at this point, is there anyone who would like to share where they are, uh, just in terms of uh, what they're doing uh, in their uh, classrooms, in terms of topics? Have some of you started your uh, research uh, topics with your students? So it'll be great if we can get one or two people, you know, just to share out because it actually helps us. Oh, okay, yay, got a response here. Okay, have not started yet, and everyone can see this. Uh, starting to plan, you know, start around mid-November. Oh, okay, excellent. Hoping to tie this unit into the American Revolution and early colonies. Okay, absolutely. Allow those students to deviate to their curiosities. Absolutely. It's called research and we don't stop research. We let the kids sort of, you know, we can hone them in always, but we kind of, you know, let them, you know, develop their own curiosities. Yeah, I love the theme for this year because it's, again, uh, National History Day. They purposely keep it very, very broad. Anyone else like to share at this point before we uh, go on and we'll do, do some more um you know, um, interactive, not so much interactive because we're on Zoom. We can't always do things interactive. Uh, but again, you know, we're just giving you strategies and steps. All right. So we are going to, okay, go on now. All right. So let me go to the next slide. All right. Again, your research questions are bricks. And then finally, your thesis statement is the cornerstone. Now, I'm gonna stop and uh, debrief for a couple minutes. We know what research questions are and we know why they're uh, needed uh, to generate uh, answers, uh, to generate, to give us information. Uh, and your research questions, you're coming up with based on the information uh, that your students are coming up with, they have questions about their research. So those are the bricks. Your thesis statement is the cornerstone. And your thesis statement is the statement that is so debatable. You may have a thesis statement after you come up with all your questions, and now you're making a bold statement based on your research, based on the questions that you have answered about your research, and now you come up with a claim. Now, I have had uh, teachers and students ask me, uh, which comes first, your research questions or your thesis statement? Well, I'm to me, I'm pretty clear about my process. Uh, and uh, when I was doing History Day projects with my students, we always came up with our topic, obviously, and then we came up with the questions about our topics. And then based on how we answered the question about our topic, then we made a thesis statement because if your thesis statement does not match your questions, then it means your thesis statement is weak and your house is a house of cards, not bricks, and your whole project cannot support itself. So your thesis is the argument of your whole research. Your students have spent weeks and months researching and they have these, you know, excellent, engaging, complex questions. And now based on all of their research and all of their questions, uh, it's the argument, they come up with a statement and it's the argument of their whole project. And why do we need one? Well, it guides our work and it guides our reading. 
So case in point, let's take a look, okay? So what makes up a thesis? It's one sentence. Some, you know, uh, teachers are very adamant. It can only be a sentence. Uh, I always gave my students some leeway. I always had a thesis paragraph that kind of summarized what all of this research was. And then the, re the thesis statement was at the end. Some uh, teachers like to do it at the beginning, but that's a you know, personal preference for everyone. But your thesis has to be backed up by research. So we actually are going to see uh, a couple samples uh, of how to build up thesis statements based on your research and based on those uh, open-ended questions that you had. And we're gonna come back to uh, the person that uh, who was the focus of this uh, presentation, Miss Sarah Jennings. So when we make a thesis statement, we have a topic, okay? And my topic was civil rights. And we're going to make a claim about civil rights in Brooklyn. And I have to support it with evidence. So this is uh, a sample, and we're going to come back to the one that uh, I'm going to be focusing on, Ms. Sarah uh, Jennings. Okay, and this was one that was done by another teacher from Brooklyn Connections, and this was their statement. Okay, the Brooklyn Bridge increased Brooklyn, Brooklyn's population by making the borough more accessible for those working. Oops, let me make this, okay. Just move this over a little bit so I can see. Okay, working in working in Manhattan. So um, the topic we know was the Brooklyn Bridge. The claim it increased Brooklyn's population. They have evidence by making the borough more accessible. This looks very simplistic, but before students could make this claim and uh, that the Brooklyn Bridge increased Brooklyn's population, they came up with all of their research. They had to do research uh, in order to make this claim. And by doing the claim, they had the evidence and maybe the evidence could be you know, population maps. Maybe the evidence is the growth of Brooklyn, uh, you know, census, so they're using data because again, it has to be backed up by the evidence. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my topic, okay? And so my topic was civil rights. I'm going in Brooklyn, I'm going to make a claim about civil rights in Brooklyn, and I'm going to use evidence to back up my thesis statement. All right, so my topic was civil rights in New York. The claim, Elizabeth Jennings was a pioneer for civil rights. And if you notice, again, I'm using uh, the buzzwords from this year's theme, you know, pioneers and frontiers in uh, history. And so again, you know, getting students to think outside of the traditional sense of a pioneer, you know, meaning, you know, westward expansion, you know, what is a pioneer, you know, a go-getter, someone who changed something. So I made this claim. Elizabeth Jennings was a pioneer for civil rights. And the evidence that I'm making for this claim, the Third Avenue Railroad Company agreed to desegregate their rail cars. And again, if you're working with students, are you doing this? Are they coming up with this claim and this evidence and their thesis statement after the very first week? Absolutely not. We're talking about uh, a series uh, of weeks of doing research, generating those guiding questions and then guiding them through those more complex questions and now having that body of evidence to be ordered to make in order to make this bold 
thesis statement. Our thesis statement is not set in stone. Again, you might have three students or five students in the same class who might focus on Elizabeth Jennings, who will have very different uh, research questions and who will have very different thesis statements. Uh, who's right, who's wrong? No one. Because if they can make a claim based on the evidence that they have done, but the thesis statements are totally different, they are both correct. So this is a thesis statement that I help, you know, so you help your students work on. And again, this was a process. Uh, again, I'm only going to talk about my experiences uh, working with students. Uh, sometimes it would take us a full week to come up with the thesis statement because the students would, you know, work on their thesis statements. And I would say, well, what's the claim that you're making? And they would say, oh, you know what? Actually, that's not true. And I would say, hmm, exactly. Your house, your, your house, your foundation is a little bit shaky. Either you come up with additional research or you might have to uh, think of other questions that are going to be used, used to support your thesis. So this really was a work in progress. And uh, I would sometimes have to spend a full week just working on thesis statements. And so your students, they have their body of evidence. And this is their bold claim. By successfully suing to end segregation on public transportation in New York, the Elizabeth Jennings case became a legal strategy for combating segregation nationwide. Wow. Pretty impressive for a middle school student or even a high school uh, student.